Hello YouTube. Tonight I'd like to go over my bug out medical kit. Or as I like to call my advanced lightweight medical kit. It starts with the bag, really. I forget where I got this. It's a three compartment bag. I probably got it from Ranger Joe's. But it works really well for what I've got going on. What I've basically done with this medical kit is create a two-stage system and the main compartment I use as the first stage. The first stage is the immediate first aid treatment of a wound, i.e. compression bandages and everything that's necessary for stopping the bleeding. That's going to be your first concern, of course. And to do that, I've got Quick Clot. These are nice. They're very, very effective at stopping bleeding, even arterial bleeding. And they come in a sterile, sealed, vacuum packed package. I also have here an eye care kit. waterproofed everything is waterproof of course in this hefty bag I've got uh, compression bandage I've got uh, cloth for adding compression and securing dressings and I've got a uh, multi-purpose uh, triangle cloth which can be used for a sling, an eye patch, a tourniquet, it can be used for really anything and it comes in a lot of GI uh, medical kits. I also have some sterile gauze here and that is pretty much it for the first stage of first aid treatment. Um, I also keep these. This is something, being part of the infantry that I was trained on using, it's called a CAT or Combat Application Tourniquet. Tourniquets, of course, are a last ditch medical procedure. And it might save your life though. I mean, you're, you could lose the limb, but once again, you know, the way I plan this whole thing out is my survival bags take into consideration, you know, having the bare essentials, but also being ready for long-term survival in very serious situations. And basically never giving up on survival. The tourniquet might save your life. And these are tested and 100% effective at stopping arterial bleeding from the extremities. So that pretty much is the whole first stage. In the second stage I've got what I refer to as wound treatment stuff which includes antiseptics, I've got triple antibiotic cream, betadine, antiseptic towelettes, which is uh, benzalkonium chloride. I don't think I have any alcohol in this kit. And wound dressings. In here I've got an assortment of different size gauze patches and adhesive bandages. Uh, covers a wide range of different things and, and these aren't really very effective at stopping bleeding which is why they're part of the second stage of first aid that I've got set up. Stop the bleeding, and then later on, when you're not in an emergency situation or not as in dire of an emergency situation, you can treat your wounds, keep them clean, and expedite healing that way. In addition, as I said, you know, I have, I'm not sure how well you can see it, I've got a field surgery kit here. Now, I do have first aid experience and training. Uh, combat lifesaver training with the US military but uh, I'm not an EMT now and I'm certainly not a doctor but I do have a field surgery kit and this includes hemostat clamps tweezers, scissors some sterile scalpel blades, a scalpel handle and a suture pack now before I get any negative comments about maybe I shouldn't have this because maybe I don't know exactly what I'm doing, I do know what I'm doing with some of this stuff. I'm not a surgeon, but keep this in mind. In a real SHTF situation, you're more likely to find 
a qualified person that can use this stuff that does not have his or her instruments than you are to find a qualified person who's got all the stuff that they already need. So if you bring the if you find a doctor, you've got the tools they need to help you. And that's part of survival. Never give up. Now in addition to that I also have sutures. It is part of my belief that and experience if you're really in a dire situation you need to be able to stitch yourself up. Uh, you don't know when you're going to come across real medical professionals and if you've got a wound that can't be closed easily either with bandages or tape or anything else then sutures will get it closed and yes I do know what I'm doing with these I don't know how well you can see it but right there I've got Yale hatchet wound which is a long funny story and how I got that but I was able to stitch this closed with a lot of help from a friend of mine it's kinda of hard to do this completely one-handed but I saved myself an emergency room trip and I haven't lost any function of my hand or anything but the wound was bad and it it was a wound that needed to be able to be closed so that's just something for you to consider for your own bag and uh, any constructive criticism or anything of my kit is welcome I hope that this actually serves to inspire you for maybe what you might want to keep in your own SHTA bag and uh, as always enjoy a nice tea cheers <laughs>